definitely my GP work because nothing else makes sense without that. If I'm not a practicing, jobbing GP in the NHS with real people, then everything else that I do loses its credibility and isn't worthwhile. The favourite part of my job is... Hmm, I think I think the favourite part of my job is... I really enjoy, I'm going to sound a bit geeky here. I really enjoy going to conferences and it's not because of the conference. It's not because of the education. It's about finding your tribe. So I go to a lot of conferences around lifestyle medicine and physical activity. And there's something about when you spend time with other doctors who have the same interests as you, that just really ignites that, that fire inside you to make a change for the better. It just gets bigger and brighter every time. So I think for me, the favourite part of doing my job is when I spend time with other doctors or healthcare professionals who have the same interests and passion as me. And the TV stuff's all right as well. I do. I experience that. I think, first of all, don't be too hard on yourself and expect to find it difficult. Learning is a skill. And like any skill, the more you do it, the more you practice it, the better you get at it. But if you have a break from it, you know, it, it, it gets really difficult for a while, but you get it back. It's like, think of a professional athlete, professional sprinter. They can be at the peak of their game. They get an injury. They have to take six months off. When they first come back, they're not going to perform to that level. But pretty quickly, with hard work and dedication, they can get back to where they were or even get beyond where they were. So expect, don't feel like a failure if it doesn't click straight away. You might have to work a little bit harder than everybody else. I came home and looked at books and was trying to just remind my brain how to do this thing, learning. Um, just know that if, you, if you're willing to put in a bit of extra work, you'll catch up. And it'll just, within a few weeks, something will just click and you're back to it again. So don't worry about it. You'll be fine. So Gladiators was first a massive, massive ITV hit show in the 90s. And I was a huge fan of the show. I was like in my teenage years at the time. Um, so when I found out that it was coming back on our screens, the Sky version, um, I was really excited. And, um, and I wasn't in the first series. So I watched the first series. I was an F1 junior doctor. And at the end of the first series, um, they said, we're looking for contestants for series two. If you think you have what it takes to take on our gladiators, then please apply by doing this. And I didn't think much of it because, you know, I was a doctor. I'm not going to start applying to go on Gladiators. And then my friend Shawzy, who was a professional rugby player, rang me up. He said, did you watch Gladiators? Yeah. Well, are you going to apply? No. Why not? I was like, well, you know, I'm a doctor now. I've got a serious job. And what will people think? Blah, blah, blah. I said, who cares? He said, how much is your student loan? I was like, oh, a lot of money. He said, well, if you win Gladiators, which you will, then you win 10 grand. So that was it. That was the final straw, <laughs> as shallow as that. So I did the application online to be a contestant, went along to the open day. And after doing all the fitness tests, they ask a number of people to stay behind who've performed well enough in the fitness test. And the production team do a two minute screen test. So I'm in, sat in this corridor with all these other people and people would go in the room in front of the camera after two minutes, they come out and off they go. Um, it my turn, and I was there till last. They left me till the very last person. Um, so I went into the room expecting to do this two minute interview. And I was in there for about 20 minutes. I'm thinking, this is a bit weird. Um, and at the end of that, they said, look, you know, we, we don't think that it's suitable for you to progress forward as a contestant. It's like, what? I said, however, we'd love you to come back next week an audition to potentially be one of our new gladiators. Will you come back? But you can't tell anyone, top secret. So I said, yeah, but that's unfair. You know, if I don't make the cut, then let me be a contestant. They were like, we can consider it. I didn't think I stood a chance. So turned up the next week, there were about 50 athletes, all these GB athletics athletes, and there's little old me. And I thought, not a chance. Don't stand a chance, but I had the best day. Like, I don't know, I found the fire in me. I found the... Um, the killer in me and I was playing rugby at the time so I was pretty fit um, and I just, I just thought I'm just going to make the most of this opportunity so again we did all these fitness tests 
and they got rid of half of the people at lunchtime. And then in the afternoon, we did the more combat thing. So we had to like do the duel with the pugil sticks. We had to wrestle. Um, then they narrowed us down to a small group. Then we had to do the P test. They had like Olympic team P testing people there. So um, that was an interesting experience because a woman actually comes into the toilet with you. You can't sit on the toilet seat. You have to squat. And she actually watches the urine coming out of your body. I'm like, this is interesting. As a doctor, I'm like fascinated by this stuff. Um, so we did that. And then we did a drama workshop. And then we were sent away. And we were, you know, we will be in touch in a few weeks to let you know who's been successful. So there were six of us in the running and they were looking for two new female gladiators. Uh, and I was doing a dermatology job at the time. And yeah, I got a phone call about three weeks later saying, how do you fancy coming to London and wearing Lycra and being a gladiator for a few months? I was like, no way. Um, so, but even then that was challenging because people said, no, you shouldn't do it. Cause you, you know, I had to take a year out of it, of educate uh, um, my training as a junior doctor. Um, but I did, and it was one of the best experiences of my life. I'm so glad I did. And if anyone ever tells you that taking a break is career suicide, it's not, it only gives you more. I mean, I knew I was always gonna come back to being a doctor. So it was a year to do something else. Um, and yeah, never look back. It didn't directly, but it kind of flipped something in my brain. So it flipped something in my brain for me, having always spoken about being sat on the sofa with Holly and Philip to thinking, that is potentially within my grasp now. So what do I need to do to make that happen? So that was when I decided to move to London to do my GP training. So that was closer to the action. Um, I got an agent and started exploring opportunities in television, but it was another, it was another four years before I actually started working in television um, and didn't have anything to do with gladiators in the end, but doing gladiators was definitely the thing that changed my mindset which enabled it. Do you know what? That's a tricky one. I used to struggle. I used to struggle with this. I think when I was at medical school and the majority of people are from a different background. Um, and, you know, my mum was an alcoholic, which was the really, which was the thing that I felt a lot of shame around, more shame than anything else. And nobody knew about that. I didn't talk about that. My housemates knew because she'd come and visit and it was pretty obvious. Um, and my best friend knew, but, but nobody else knew. Um, and, and at the time, yeah, I felt a lot, of, a lot of shame. So it was kind of something, I just didn't really talk about it. Now, the absolute opposite is true. I see my upbringing and my life experience as, as a huge positive. I think, I think I'm so privileged that I've experienced my life growing up, which was, you know, pure working class. Mum was on benefits. We didn't have everything we wanted, but I never went hungry. We always had enough food on the table. I think she might have used food banks once or twice. So, you know, we were on the cusp of poverty, but we weren't. We And we had, we lived in our house. We always had, we had free school meals and we had free school clothing vouchers, but we always have, had everything we needed, but we were pure working class. And now, you know, by being at, going to university, surrounded by people who are middle class by being a doctor the fact that I'm a doctor means I am now a I'm now I'm not I'm working class but you know strictly speaking as far as the consensus is concerned I'm middle class and I work in an area of London a pocket of London which is very deprived and a lot of my patients are living in poverty in a completely different way to which I did you know we've spoken over the throughout the pandemic um, families where you know they actually don't they can't afford to have enough to feed their children um, so I see that I see families of six living in a one-bedroom flat etc cetera, etc cetera. so I think it's a huge privilege for me to have experienced the world of poverty through the eyes of my patients the world of working class which is the majority of people in this country through lived experience but then also being able to see and understand life for middle class I've had friends a lot of my friends went to private boarding schools. I now see that as a real privilege. It means I'm better at my job. It means I, I just have a different outlook. And it means I spend a lot of my time now 
educating my middle class friends about the real world. Um, it's something I'm hugely proud of, especially to have achieved what I've achieved without privilege. Um, it's something I'm really proud of. And, the, and what I learned is when you start to talk about it and you start to tell people the truth, when, you know, people I've spoken now on this morning about my mum's alcohol problems. Um, what comes back is encouragement and praise that people just say, wow, you know, I thought what you've achieved is amazing. Now you've told me that it's even more amazing. People don't think poorly of you. They think more highly of you, but it takes a lot of confidence I think to be really open about that sort of stuff and you don't have to you don't want to you don't have to but, but do <laughs>